Hello, in this little video lecture, we're going to talk uh, briefly about Western blotting, since it's something we'll be doing this week in the lab. Uh, Western blotting, first of all, what is it? Uh, as you see there written on the, on the screen, it's an analytical technique that's used to detect very specific proteins in your sample uh, based on two distinguishing properties of the proteins. First is molecular weight, and the second is antibody binding specificity. So the proteins need to first be separated based on molecular weight, which we know we can do pretty easily now with uh, an SDS page, um, running a gel to separate them based on protein, and then what we do next in Western blotting is we will blot those proteins from the gel onto a membrane and then probe the membrane with antibodies uh, that are specific for the protein of interest. A little diagram here on the side shows you the uh, gel blotting and then the uh, probing with the antibodies. Uh, not too difficult sample prep. We've done this before depending on the cells and the, or the tissue or where the source of the proteins. Uh, sample prep could be uh, incubating with lysozyme, and uh, grinding it up, all sorts of different ways. And then the gel electrophoresis, which we know the SDS page, uh, allows us to separate those proteins based on size. Shows you a picture there of a typical SDS page gel that has been stained. We will probably not stain ours first since we're going to be probing with antibodies. There's no need to stain uh, to be able to see the proteins first. Uh, transfer. Here's something. Here's the new part that we have not uh, done that that you will be doing this week in the lab. The transfer is going to use the same um, box that we used for the SDS page to do the transfer. Now once the proteins have been separated vertically in the gel, we're then going to transfer them out from the gel onto a membrane. So we're going to have to set up this, this fancy sort of sandwich. Uh, as you can see here showing on the right side, the layers of the sandwich. We're going to start with um, a the gel holder. The black side will be down. That will be towards the cathode. So we know the proteins are negatively charged, so they are going to move in this direction off of the gel. Uh, onto the membrane. So there's this sandwich. There's some fiber pads, as you can see in the top and the bottom. There's also filter paper that will help in the transfer, uh, 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 keeping the charge even by keeping the whole sample wet. There's also then the gel in the middle, right here, and the membrane, which will lay right on top of the gel, and we will have the transfer of the proteins. Uh, once we squish that all together, stick it in the, um, the electrophoresis chamber, and then we run the current um, actually going across the gel this way as opposed to going up and down that we've seen before. Um, before we talk about the probing, we have to talk a little bit about antibody uh, basics. Uh, you're probably familiar with antibodies. You know, they're produced uh, in response to presence of a certain antigen. Uh, and they are highly specific. There are some things that are that are similar about all antibodies. You can see here on this on this diagram, you have there's two heavy chains in a typical antibody. There's one, and then here's the other. And then there are two light chains. Light simply because they're shorter. Um, and there's a constant region. That's what the C stands for. And then there's also variable regions on the ends here. So you get that typical Y shape. But there's two long, heavy chains, held together by cysteine cross bridges. Uh, the light chain and the heavy chain are also held together by cysteine cross bridges. <clears throat> and then at the end here, you have an area where, which is where the antigen will bind. So you see that in there is the antigen binding site. And for each antibody, there are two of them, one on each side here, where the, it will specifically stick to a particular antigen based on its shape. If you zoom in on that and look on the right side here, you can see uh, the specific antigen uh, binding to <clears throat> that antigen binding site. The actual part of the protein that sticks in that antigen binding site uh, is known as the epitope. As you can imagine, a protein that is very large has a number of different sort of pieces or structures sticking off for it. So you could have antibodies that are specific to um, one epitope or one area of the protein and then a different antibody that's specific to another area of the, of the protein or a different epitope. So you can have multiple antibodies that will recognize the same antigen. So those, that's the quick and dirty version of uh, antibody. So now we can talk about the next step in the Western blotting. Um, once we've onto the membrane. Uh, the first thing we will need to do is block the membrane. Now, as we want to cover every other area of the membrane um, it, it, with a neutral protein, we're going to use casein or milk protein, so that 
any antibodies that we, once we add the antibodies, they won't be able to stick to the membrane. Since the membrane is sticky to proteins, and antibodies are proteins, the antibodies could stick on the membrane in places we don't want them to. So but the first step will be to block the membrane. That is, cover up all the areas where there aren't protein bands with casein. After we do that, in, in part A here, we will add the primary antibody. The primary antibody is specific to the protein we're after. It will bind specifically to the bands that were on the SDS page gel in the exact same locations uh, that they've migrated. So this first uh, area here shows you the primary antibody stuck to the antigen uh, that is actually on the nitrocellulose membrane. Once we've bound the primary antibody, we'll wash off the extra put on a secondary antibody which will be specific to the primary antibody and also have a conjugated to it uh, a reporter enzyme. In this case we're going to use uh, horseradish peroxidase that's with the HRP in the HRP conjugated antibody down here that represents. Uh, that secondary antibody recognizes the primary antibody as its antigen. So if anywhere there is primary antibody bound, the secondary antibody will also bind. And then once we wash off the extra secondary antibody, uh, we will have bound to the antigen a primary antibody and a secondary antibody with a reporter enzyme. We then add the color detection uh, reagent, which in this case is the substrate for the horseradish peroxidase. And it, what it will do is produce a colored product, which will stick to the membrane. So anywhere where there's a primary antibody, secondary antibody, and then the substrate, we will get uh, a band, very similar to what it looked like on the gel. So that's the, the quickie for the blocking and detection. It was blocking to cover the membrane and all the spots that there's uh, no protein primary antibody to stick to our target our targeted protein secondary antibody which will stick to the primary antibody and then the development stage and that is it